So good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for having me today. I wish that I could say they saved the best for last, but they saved the best for the first one today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I appreciate the introduction as uh, kindly she did. I am Vince Sansoni. I'm the Deputy Office Director in ORO OGD. It's my pleasure today to talk to you about Kadu for Two review timelines. I hope you find it informative and helpful in guiding your end of submissions and knowing what to expect when you submit your submissions. So with that, I'm going to try to do a little dynamic presentation today. I'm going to start speaking from up here at the podium or up here behind the computer, and then I'm going to try to walk down because I have some graphics that I like to go over to go over with you through the presentation and maybe perhaps use a laser pointer and we can you know kind of make a little bit more dynamic presentation. So bear with me and then I'll try to get things going for you guys. So what we're, going to cal what we're going to go over today is we're going to go over um, Gadufa 2 original goal date calculations. And this is just basically how we're going to, how Gadufa goal dates are calculated with original submissions and amendments. So this is just going to be an overview and it's taken directly from the commitment letter. Next, we're going to go over three different timelines. And this is where the meat of the presentation occurs. And as you can see, we're going to go over a review timeline without a PFC. Review, time, review timeline with the PFC, and a review timeline with the pre-ANDA program. And for those, just for PFC, is pre-submission facility correspondence, and we'll get into more of that later as we progress through the presentation. Then we're going to review just briefly again the GDUFA 2 supplement goal calculations just to make the, F, the um, presentation thorough and in, you know, in the sake of making sure we address everything. They don't actually have the timelines that we're using, but we're going to go over how the Gadufa 2 supplement gold, act, gold calculations are calculated. Then, of course, you know, the, one of the most important things that I think you guys want to take away is what does this mean to you? What is the impact for applicants? How can you use this in your work? You know, how is this beneficial to you? That's the most important thing, right? You know, it's what we can do for you it's what, and then have a win-win for the FDA. And then we're going to go over some points of contact that is always useful, especially if you have questions following today's presentation or when you're preparing your submissions. And we're always going to go over some useful resources that I always like to have handy right, behind, right beside my desk, and you should too, as they explain everything in detail. So we're going to jump right in, and we're going to go, how are these goal dates calculated? No mystery. It's all from the, it's all from the commitment letter. I kind of condensed it into an easier to manage kind of slide, I think. But we're going to go over some examples of how these goal dates are calculated. So you, you can see that this is taken directly from the com commitment letter. And it's broken down into original amendments. And you can see that the 90% metric is applied throughout the um, goal, cal goal calculation paradigm. So if you were to look at, say, for instance, and we're just going to take a couple of examples, but if you were to submit a priority major amendment, you could see that you could possibly receive a six-month goal date if no inspections required. Then, of course, you could follow that same logic out if you submitted a priority major, receive an eight-month goal date with a PFC, and 10 months if no inspection, uh, with an inspection required. And so, oh, I'm going to say this uh, throughout the presentation, but it's a good point to note and point of reference that a pre-submission facility correspondence, just because you submit it, it has to remain complete, unchanged, and accurate at the time of the end of submission. So we'll, we'll keep going into that. But as you can see, this kind of outlines some of how the goal date calculations are, are calculated uh, from the time of the submission. One of the easiest things to remember, though, is e regardless if it's a standard or priority submission, uh, it will see a three-month uh, goal date from there on out. And you can always check if it's a priority submission by referring to the MAP 5240.3, which outlines what, prior what falls into a priority category. All right, so now we're going to start getting into the meat of the presentation and, and actually going an in-depth dive of how these review timelines are calculated and what actually happens during the course of a review. Again, we're going to go over a submission without a PFC, uh, original submission with a PFC, and original submission that qualified with the pre-ANDA program. So this is where I'm going to try to walk down here and walk through some of these steps on the slides for you for these three different review timelines. So we'll, we'll try to make it a little bit more interesting for you guys. So as we can see, this is the standard review for a 10-month goal. And this is the basic review timeline. 
Uh, and if we start to see from we're going to work from left to right just in chronological order and do it logically. But if we see if we start over here with the pre, pre submission activities, uh, we'll go into later what can happen during this as, as you know, in alludes to the PFC and the pre and the um, product development meetings. They're coming up in later slides. But this is the pre submission activities where industry is getting ready to submit, you're doing your due diligence, you're getting your package together, and you're getting ready to submit your ANDA to the FDA. If we move over to the filing assessment, we see filing assessment begins as soon as the ANDA is submitted to filing. Uh, they begin their assessment doing everything they need to make sure that the uh, package is ready and acceptable for filing. They usually wind up completing at or around day 60. And during that process, that you hope to receive your, you know, a filing acknowledgement letter, moving it will move, meaning it will move on for further review from the FDA. And you can see a small overlap between the two here. And that's where we actually, even towards the end of the filing assessment, we're beginning to triage our disciplines, getting ready to assign the necessary work, and identify any possible consults if needed during this timeline. Then we begin the discipline assessment. This is where all the action occurs, if you will. This is where the disciplines are doing their reviews. They're, they're doing their assessment of the application. They're taking their time. They're issuing all kind of things can happen in between here. And we'll actually go through some of the more in detail. But I'm sure you realize you're going to get your IRs issued here. You're going to get your DRLs issued here. You're going to get your CRs issued here, et cetera. So this is the, where all the assessment is taking place, right here. And then if you move further down, now we're down to the preparing for the final action. So this is a little overlap because once we start getting the discipline reviews to wrap up their assessments, making sure that they're complete and adequate, and this end is ready to meet all scientific and regulatory requirements, we're, be we're going to begin to prepare the final action. Now, we're beginning to prepare the final action, so we need to make sure everything's accurate, and that even includes making sure it meets all other regulatory requirements to make sure it's ready for approval. So this is the basic standard 10-month goal and how these things would follow in a perfect world. Now, I want to make a note here is that the FDA strives to take action as soon as the ANDA application meets scientific and regulatory requirements, meaning even though this has a 10-month goal and it looks like we're winding up on, 10, you know, on month 10, if this ANDA happens, it was a good submission submitted first, and we can take all these actions and get all our stuff assessments done sooner, we will take action sooner. That's our goal. That's our mission. We, we don't hold it up to 10 months just because we have 10 months to complete it. We will try to reach this, uh, you know, provide an action sooner if possible. So that's a good point to note. Now, second timeline. This is a priority review with an eight-month goal. Okay. Well, how do we arrive at an eight-month goal? Well, if we were, if we arrived at an eight-month goal, we had to have a pre-submission facility correspondence (PFC) submitted. So that way, if you start down here and we work our way up, we have the PFC was submitted appropriately before the ANDA was filed, two to three months out. And that, if it remained unchanged and accurate at the time of submission, when that ANDA came in and we began our filing assessment, that's what qualifies it for an eight-month goal. So this is where you can take advantage and you can get a shorter goal date if you submit the PFC and it's complete and accurate and unchanged, you will receive that eight-month goal. Well, the reason that happens that we can give that eight-month goal is because now we started our facility assessment here, and we can begin it earlier, and that will translate into the hitting that eight-month goal sooner than that 10-month goal. So that's where that how we benefit from it as well as you do. You get the shorter goal, but we're also assessing those facilities earlier, getting a jump start to what we need to assess the ANDA. Now, this timeline also has on the time points, of course, filing was submitted here, ANDA came in. Um, the assessment was completed at or around day 60, as mentioned before. We begin triaging the disciplines. And here we have the filing determination at day 60. Now, we also have what can happen in between here, of course, and this is where the discipline, discipline assessment is occurring, is as you can see, we have the IRs may be issued through here. So during this period of time, we will have IRs all leading up to the DRL. That's the discipline review letter, part of our commitment letter. We're going to get you a discipline response letter. So what that discipline response letter is usually typically whatever the goal is, it's the midpoint plus 30. Well, the goal here was 8. So now you're looking at 4 months plus 30, which winds you up right around here at the end of month uh, 5. So 
what can you expect in the DRL? That's our preliminary thoughts on the deficiencies we found thus far in the review. So what happens after that? You continue on down to the preparing for the regulatory action. We, were, we would hope the response comes back from the DRL. If it was a good ANDA submission, hopefully we're putting the po finishing polishing touches on the ANDA. We won't have to issue a CR. We, hopefully we can just keep reviewing, maybe issue another IR, and hit that regulatory action by the due date in a one cycle approval. That's our goal too. And I'll keep reminding us that that's kind of the theme for the win-win for the applicants and industry is to hit that one cycle approval. So if we start doing that, we have different things that could happen here, like I said, the IRs, or if need be, we'll actually take the CR and close out the action here. But this is all trying to get us to hit that action by that eight-month goal. So the last review timeline is pre and a program with a 10-month goal. Now, if you're looking at the pre and a program with a 10-month goal, something things, certain things had to happen during the pre-submission. So you had to have your product development meeting, your pre-ANDA submission, and that qualifies you for the mid-cycle review meeting. So if you do those things in this 10-month goal, now you have a, a chance to hit that mid-cycle review meeting. So this just aids in trying to help you guys and help us get that ANDA application approved sooner. Again, filing assessment occurs, filing determination occurs, the discipline assessment again happens, we have IRs being issued, and in this case, we're issuing the DRL slightly before the mid-cycle, in this case, 5 plus 30, uh, because we want to get that DRL out issued before the mid-cycle review meeting. So that's what is afforded with the pre-ANDA program is the mid-cycle review meeting. And again, hopefully that, that we're just putting the finishing polishing touches on throughout this regulatory process, maybe an issue in IR, not having to take a CR, and we're getting to that final action by month 10. Uh, so that's if sooner, like I said, if sooner if possible. So that's what kind of these timelines afford you. But again, we will take action if we can sooner. So this is taken directly from the uh, GDUFA 2 commitment letter. Um, and basically, I'll go back up on stage now, but that was what I wanted to point out with the review timelines. But if we move on to this... Uh, you do for two, into the supplement world, it kind of is taken directly from the commitment letter, and I won't spend much time, but it just shows you how the goal dates are broken down when a supplement is. If it's a, PA, a prior approval supplement, it can either receive a six or ten month goal. If it's a priority, it could possibly leave a four, a four month goal without if no inspection is required, etc. And the PAS amendments kind of follow the same logic, and of course the, the PAS amendments that are minor, standard or priority, doesn't matter. They receive a uh, three-month goal. Moving on, what is the impact for applicants? Well, it's an opportunity, like I said, to, for you guys to receive earlier go dates. If you use a, take the PFC route, you can get that eighth-month goal. We can start our inspection process sooner. We can get you to approval sooner using that eighth-month goal. It's a win for you guys. There's also more predictable actions and timelines. And what I mean by that is I've kind of alluded to what happens during the review cycles now that are already communicated to you. So you have IRs that are communicated during the uh, review assessment. You have DRLs that are automatically communicated to your assessment. You have a mid-cycle or possibly a mid-cycle review meeting that's communicated now. These are all kind of things that will help you gauge where your status is without having to ask the RPM, what is the status of this ANDA right now? Because all these communications are coming to you by default. So now you actually have more transparency by default with these letter and letters and communications. And that all leads to just a more predictable timeline for you. Hopefully you won't have, if you haven't heard from us, it won't be until the end after the DRL comes back and you're just curious where it stands now right before we take action. And again, this is where it comes down to you guys. This increases your business certainty, right? You know, this is, you know, your world, not my world, but, you know, I'm sure it helps you prepare for product launches. It helps you get all your stuff, ducks in a row that you need to launch your product, get your application to market, et cetera, right? That's the goal. You know, and our goal was to get it out as soon as we can because we want these generic drugs out on the market. So, again, a win-win. We also have the opportunity for you guys to do it right and pull ahead of the first time. Can't stress enough. Good, good submissions at the beginning lead to faster approval times, 
leads to one cycle approvals. That's the key here. Start off with a good submission. We won't have to take a, a CR because we can wrap those up in the DRL. This is a win. So this is a chance for you guys to pull ahead of competitors if your submission is better than the other guys. And it also, may, this is a chance to make the final corrections. So again, if you submit that good ANDA, then we're not, we're not taking major corrections. After that DRL issue is issued, hopefully we can move forward with approval. We won't have to take that CR. We won't have to go through another round of IRs. You know, it's a, it's a first cycle approval, which is what we really want, which is what you guys want. So it's another win-win for the applicant. And then lastly, the points of contact. Well, anything post-filing is going to start with your regulatory project manager. That's your first line of point of contact. Again, hopefully you have some of these status updates and questions already answered by the communications we in, we've um, initiated with you. But if that's your, that's your point of contact post-filing. For PAS questions, it's a little, di little bit different. That's discipline dependent. Labeling PASs will be the labeling project manager. Quality pro uh, prior approval supplements will be the regulatory business project manager. And prior approval supplement, two or more disciplines, that's the RPM. Now, lastly, just like to finish up with the resources. This, all my information basically with the gold A calculations came directly from the GDUFA 2 commitment letter. The ANDA submissions and the amendments to abbreviate a new application under GDUFA, that's just what we refer to as the amendments guidance, basically has all the information you need is what you can expect when you submit an amendment. We have the prioritization map. If you wanted to see how I got those goal date calculations for priority of you, please refer to the prioritization map. That will outline that. And then if you have any questions, refer to the PFC guidance, I like to call it, um, pre-submission facility correspondence. That'll gauge you and all you need to know regarding the PFC. So again, our goal is the same as yours. Win-win for the applicants, win-win for us. We want to get that and as soon as we can. Start with a good submission. We will do our due diligence, and we will try to get you that first cycle approval. Thanks for your time today, guys. Really appreciate it.